Welcome to Conscious Confidence Radio, a timeless wisdom with Sarah Main. Follow host Sarah Main on her ongoing journey of conscious confidence and gain timeless wisdom to unleash unparalleled confidence. A conscious confidence. Learn to ignite the living spark of wisdom, a new narrative for fulfillment contained in Sanskrit and the ancient, powerful, engaging, and fun conscious conversations to discover your own magnificent true self. Learn to dispel the fear shadow as Sarah provides essential knowledge about embracing change and the power of transformation. Get ready. Conscious Confidence starts now. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to Conscious Confidence Radio. I'm Sarah Main, creator of Conscious Confidence, a timeless wisdom. And welcome, everyone, to today's show. And today we're going to be talking about beauty. Yes, beauty. And beauty is in the heart of the beholder. Hang on a minute. Isn't it beauty's in the eye of the beholder? Well, that's what the, the famous statement says. But the famous quote says, but I'm saying beauty is in the heart of the beholder. So what is beauty? Let's get right into it. What is beauty? Where is beauty? And how do we see beauty, especially when it seems otherwise, when it's not so nice? How do we see beauty? There's a very famous poet and writer and artist, and he was a philosopher, but he never liked that title himself, so a reluctant philosopher, called Khalil Gibran, and he wrote the very famous um, book, passage, poem, The Prophet, and he said, beauty is not in the face, beauty is a light in the heart. Beauty is not in the face, beauty is a light in the heart. So what is beauty? Now, when we're talking about beauty, let's go back, as I like to do, let's go back to the wisdom of the Sanskrit language to deepen and broaden our perspective because whether we like it or not, uh, everything we think um, and speak and then therefore enact and act in our lives is based on some form of speech, of language. So I was taught to always go back to languages at the start and to go back to the root languages. And for me, I was taught to go back to Sanskrit, which is one of the the most fundamental languages. And um, in Sanskrit, and the wisdom in Sanskrit, the word Sanskrit means pure and perfectly formed. So the wisdom in Sanskrit is pure and perfectly formed. So... I found three words, there are lots of words in Sanskrit that sort of talk about beauty, but I picked up, picked three that really I thought covered certain elements of it. I found three words for beauty in Sanskrit, and that's saundarya, saundarya, you can say it with me, saundarya, charuta, charuta, and shobha, shobha. So saundarya, charuta, and shobha. Now, Sundarya means beauty, loveliness, gracefulness, elegance, but it also means noble conduct, generosity, charming, and being agreeable. So all those qualities are Sundarya. Uh, and then there's Charuta, the second word, and that's loveliness, uh, beauty, beloved, endeared. Uh, so you get the sense of love, beloved. And then Shobha is splendor, brilliance, shining, luster, radiating, illuminating, uh, and grace and loveliness. So it's got this light to do with light and, and uh, shining. So there's three different aspects. You've got the beauty, loveliness, and gracefulness, and elegance, and noble conduct and generosity is one aspect of beauty. Then you've got charata, which is the beloved, endeared, loveliness, beauty side of things. And then shobha is the splendor and brilliance and luster uh, aspect of beauty. So I thought those three covered, it's like think of a jewel with three different facets to it, three different energies and feelings when we say that's beautiful, when we look at a beautiful sunrise um, or when we see... Uh, a child or um, 
our pet or something that we or some beautiful thoughts and words and beautiful sentiment and of course beautiful features on someone the different aspects of this of this concept of beauty so here's a story one day at a retreat a young woman was in a group and everyone was asked to fall deeply still and find a restful place within and then they opened their eyes and what was before them was a an image projected on a screen and it was the image of a beautiful peach colored rose absolute perfection and it was bathed in sunlight and it had a drop or two of water on it just sheer perfection exquisite beauty breathtaking indescribable and they were asked to simply allow the eyes to rest on this image and every time an experience rose fine but then to let it pass don't hang on to it don't indulge in it as and build on it just let the experience come be felt experienced and pass and let any feelings rise and fall let the thoughts rise and fall let everything come and go and just stay with the image and that was the exercise and then there was an opportunity to talk about it afterwards and there's much that can be said about such a simple exercise as the contemplation of a beautiful image with a clear mind and a still heart but this young woman realized something and she, what she realized and this came out in the conversation and discussion in the group that she could not have known that external beauty of a rose in full bloom without actually acknowledge the beauty that was in herself that was within first so that the seeing of the beauty outside on the in the image was actually an act of recognition it's not how we would normally think of it she was actually recognizing beauty because somewhere deep within that beauty was already within her and she understood that the beauty within and the beauty that she saw in the rose were one and the same was the same beauty so what does this story illustrate for us what can we learn from this well hermes trismegistus um, egyptian a philosopher some say did he actually exist mythical i don't know um, he said as within so without so the only reason she could see the beauty in the rose was because the beauty was within and it would be impossible to see the beauty in the rose or anywhere outside if it wasn't already within that seeing beauty is actually recognizing beauty because it's already there so that's the message in the story. It was the message for the young woman in the in the story, going uh, participating in that exercise in that group, and that's the message for us. So it is that which is within us that we actually recognise externally when we so-called see beauty. Um, it's the saundaria, the beauty, the loveliness, the gracefulness, the elegance, the noble conduct, the generosity. It's the charata, it's the loveliness, the beauty, the beloved, the endeared, that love we feel. And the shobha, the splendor, the brilliance, the luster, the illumination, the radiance, the grace, all of that is within us. And so the, the place to start is within us. So to summarize, what is the nature of beauty? First, beauty is lovely, noble and radiant. Next, it is within us, it's within yourself. And lastly, it allows you to see or actually recognize this everywhere you look. Because it's within you, everywhere you look out, you're recognizing it. So remember that when you're out and about and you see something beautiful, stop and remember that that's actually within yourself first and you're recognizing it outside. If it wasn't within you first, you would look at it, your eyes would fall on that and you wouldn't register it as beautiful. So it's actually within yourself first. This is a very important point. It's at the heart of a lot of 
philosophy and it's good to consider these things the sanskrit gets us to consider deeply it gets us to think more deeply um, not just take things at, for, at face value we stop and consider oh, what did i think about beauty i only think about beauty about the cover of magazines you know or some model or something or occasionally i'll look at the sunrise and think that's beautiful or or a flower's beautiful but consider everywhere you see something beautiful it's within yourself and you're recognizing it it's reflection it's a reflection and a recognition and the language help that considering sanskrit going back to that opens ourselves up and gets us reflecting and considering deeply so what can we do what does beauty mean in practice for us well fall still and come to a feeling of peace and calm let the eyes rest on something beautiful that you think is beautiful let go of any desire for experience just remember that the beauty you are seeing without is already within and you are simply recognizing it in the object that you're seeing. Try that. Just actually take a moment. You can do that whilst you're waiting for the kettle to boil whilst, before you make a cup of tea. Just try it. Fall still, be calm, and look at something beautiful. And then just let everything else go and stay with that, uh, that observing, that watching, and that experience of beauty. And remember that that is an act of recognition and then that there's actually a connection between what is apparently outside and what's within. It's all connected. So that's a consideration of beauty based on three Sanskrit words, Sandarya, Charuta and Shobha. On my Instagram and Facebook page, you'll see slides coming up where I've actually taken those words and they're beautifully illustrated on tiles um, with some uh, reminders of these different meanings just to open up our memory of what beauty is and how to uh, experience beauty and connect with beauty so try that ex that practice of looking at something beautiful and yes you could look at everything if the beauty is within that means everything is beautiful despite how it appears but that sometimes can be tested by the outward display Anyway, we're going to take a break now and we'll be back and it's mailbag time where you can ask me anything and ask your questions and I've got some great questions for today. So we'll be back soon after the break and remember the beauty is within first and what you see without is a reflection. See you soon. Get empowered on transformationtalkradio.com Learn to love more fearless with me, Kate, through fun, lively, real conversations as I interview expert guests who have charted a course out of the darkness into the light. Listen live every second and fourth Monday at 9 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. To connect with me and check out my work as an intuitive healer, guide, and coach, visit LoveMoreFearlessIntuitive.com. We all carry around fears, insecurities and other unhelpful feelings. It would be great to be able to just put them down. One day, two Buddhist monks were on a journey. They came to a fast flowing river and saw a young woman unable to cross because she couldn't swim. The older monk, without hesitation, offered to help her across the water. Hours later, the younger monk couldn't contain himself any longer. We're not supposed to have contact with women, and yet you helped that woman across the river. Why? The older monk replied, I put that young lady down hours ago. Why are you still carrying her? Hi, I'm Sarah Main, creator of Conscious Confidence, a timeless wisdom, and host of Conscious Confidence Radio. Learn how to put down those things of the past with my FUSE program. Buy my book, Conscious Confidence Today, at ConsciousConfidence.com and get started. Inspire. Create. Empower. Only on TransformationTalkRadio.com Introducing the Lucid Planet, a digital gathering place featuring cutting-edge, high-vibrational content that will empower and inspire you to become the greatest version of yourself. 
Visit the Lucid Planet today to stimulate your mind, body, and soul as you connect with a global community of like-minded people. The Lucid Planet is edited by renowned psychologist and author, Dr. Kelly Neff, who is here to help you cope with anxiety, connect to your higher purpose, uncover your true passions, and live your dreams. Dr. Kelly's fresh, compassionate perspective emphasizes growth, transformation, healing, and thriving. Even in the face of adversity, say goodbye to bad news and low vibrational media for good and become part of the larger collective of people working together to navigate the global shift of consciousness and transform the world from within. Join the planet, the Lucid Planet. Visit thelucidplanet.com. Welcome home. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back to Conscious Confidence Radio with Sarah Main. And today uh, we've been talking about beauty. Just a quick recap of uh, before the break. We were talking about beauty and that beauty is actually within first. All these qualities are actually within. And what we see apparently without us when we look is, a, is an act of recognition because the inner and the outer are connected. So... Today we're talking about beauty and we looked at the Sanskrit words Sandarya, Charuta and Shobha. And Sandarya has this act of beauty and loveliness but also uh, grace and nobility of conduct and movement and generosity. And then uh, Charuta is, to, is beauty and loveliness but related to um, the beloved, that which is endeared to you. So it has a different aspect. And the last one, Shobha, is all to do with shining and splendor and radiating and illuminating and that sort of beauty. So there's all these different aspects to what we call in English just one word, beauty. Sanskrit is so rich. There's all these different words describing different aspects, elements, um, facets of this one thing. And, um, and the suggestion is, as within, so without. So when you see something beautiful outside yourself, connect with yourself, fall still and connect with yourself and remember that that beauty is within first and then we see it reflected outside. It's recognised outside. So mailbag time, time for your questions. You can ask me anything and I've got some lovely questions today. Uh, the first one's from Lorna. Thank you, Lorna. And this is, can you explain how Sanskrit is relevant in our lives today? I haven't learned Sanskrit. I don't think I'm going to learn Sanskrit, but I still find what you say about Sanskrit opens my mind. So thank you, Lorna. That is a fabulous question. Um, I get it a lot, but it's, it's really important to keep revisiting it. Um, what I'm endeavouring to do with these podcasts and the magazine articles that I'm writing, and there's one that's out and about at the moment on Prema, Universal Love, and I did a show on that as well, on a podcast, is I go back to Sanskrit and just say, what does the Sanskrit teach us about this thing? Because we use the word love, or today it's beauty. Last month it was strength and resilience and fearlessness um, and before that I did um, show um, a whole theme on patience and calmness and peace. Um, <clears throat> I go back to what the Sanskrit says because that's what I was taught and find the wisdom in the Sanskrit. So I'm not saying learn Sanskrit. What I'm doing is just opening a doorway to connecting with this literally timeless wisdom. It's universal wisdom. And universal, that is a key bit here. And we again, all these words are used and bandied about. But think about it. If something is truly universal, it's relevant all the time. It's for all time, in all places, in all circumstances. It's everywhere all the time it's universal so that means it's never not relevant it doesn't go out of fashion it doesn't change and in my experience universal timeless wisdom is simple it's first principles 
So you're not having to remember a whole lot of complex things. It brings you back to yourself. It gets your feet on the floor. You can actually apply this stuff simply in the present moment. It's not complex. So that appeals to me because I don't have to remember a whole lot of complex things. It's simple and direct and it is connected to yourself fundamentally. Sanskrit is just one means but it's a very very powerful means and if you um, sort of relate to the whole concept of energy the energy within the language is so potent I mean the vibrations and the sounds are very beautiful they've done a lot of scientific um, so they've done some scientific studies actually on monks and sort of wise men chanting for two and three hours and they've done all these brain scans and they've shown that whole areas of their brains expand in a good way when they chant Sanskrit the very vibrations and the focus and the concentration on Sanskrit actually has this powerful effect and certainly if you learn any chants and I'll chant something at the end of the show um, as I do every show it you know, it does actually change the atmosphere. And, I, and of course, the school that I taught at, Sanskrit was on the curriculum. And, you know, every day we would sing a simple prayer and it changed everything. We'd start the day and end the day with something. Changed everything. You know, just changed the atmosphere. Didn't matter what went on during the day. Just clarified, purified things. Really amazing. Um so Sanskrit has this relevance with the connection to wisdom, simple wisdom that's applicable. Like I was saying today about beauty, um, it's just a simple thing that when you look out, connect with yourself and realise that the beauty you see without is actually within first. That brings you right back to yourself. That's first principles. That's powerful because that gets you grounded in yourself. And if that magnificent beauty you see without is actually within that means that magnificent beauty is within you now sanskrit knows that we may have forgotten that about ourselves but sanskrit knows that sanskrit has your back the timeless wisdom has your back they totally believe in us and then with that knowledge that that magnificent beauty that you've just recognized in the sunrise is actually within you first take that energy take that upliftment into everything that you do Make what you do beautiful. Do the very best uh, work when you um, go to work. Make sure your work is excellent. Reflect that beauty in everything that you do. Let it come out of the very fingertips. When you speak to people, let that beauty shine out because it's within you. Give expression to it. That's not difficult. That's very simple. And it takes us out of our head, <coughs> takes us out of our head excuse me, as a concept. And it makes it very practical. We're, it's actually living it. So that's one way um, that Sanskrit is practical. And I'm just endeavouring to bring Sanskrit to people who are interested so it gets them to think more deeply, takes them down a bit further out of it, the normal jangle of daily life and, and busyness and so on, um, just to consider things more deeply, get back to a few first principles. It's much calmer and quieter. It's like getting below the surface of choppy water in the ocean. It's calm and peaceful down there. It's a completely different rhythm. And it's utterly relevant because this language, this knowledge is universal. It's timeless. It's not even ancient. I use the word timeless because it's ancient means it was way back when. Well, it was, but it's also right now as well. So I hope that helps it you know look i could talk for hours and hours and hours but that is one way of answering that it's utterly relevant to get back to first principles think more deeply connect with yourself so i would suggest um i've got articles that are out and about um in lots of publications and they're all noted on my website if you go there consciousconfidence.com and um, listen to some of my podcasts because i'm talking about this constantly and you'll get all these practical tips in my show i always try and give a practical tip, something to practice, and a story which illustrates something. So, uh, and over time, this builds up, and you'll you'll start to see things differently. It's really good. So, thank you, Lorna. The second one's from Jeff. I want to try your practices, but I forget because my life is so busy. How can I remember? 
So thanks, Jeff. Yes, memory is a thing. It's like a muscle. It needs strengthening. So don't be disheartened if you forget. Take that as a you know useful piece of information. Um, you can do all sorts of things like write a post-it note and put it on your computer, set a timer on your phone. So right, I'm going to remember three times today. So set three timers or set three alarms or set one and then when that one goes off and you, you remember and stop and practice something, set the next one. Um, and it, you won't have to do that for very long before you actually tell the mind, you're sending a message to the mind that, hey, I actually want to remember. So rather than the mind sending you all this sort of distraction and nonsense, it will start actually working with you rather than against you and um, it's very, the mind's very trainable um, and it just takes a little bit of discipline and that takes some determination and intention and will. And your will is like a muscle. It needs to be strengthened. And that just cut, happens through um, intention, resolve, decision and practice, just repetition, practice. We just practice being distracted so we're used to that and it's easier. A little bit of practice and a few practical aids um, even something around your wrist, right, uh, to help you remember and just pick one practice and try it every day for a week, all right, try it two or three times a day. And often my practices are not long involved practices. They're just for a few minutes because we're working with consciousness here and consciousness is the ultimate power. It's not so powerful. It is the power. And so a little bit of consciousness, shining the light, lifting the, increasing the level of consciousness in your life has a profound effect. It's very uh, noticeable quickly. So a little bit of regular practice and you will just notice that you feel different, you will see things differently, you will view situations differently, you will respond differently um, and strengthen the memory in whatever way but it's a muscle and it does need to be exercised but a bit of repetition a few aids like a time a post-it note something and and you'll find you start remembering more often than you forget um, and you know that and that's the way it works and be grateful for when you do remember see it as a gift and say thank you for that so thanks for the questions and if you want to find out more, go to my website, ConsciousConfidence.com. That's ConsciousConfidence.com. And you'll see I've written a book, uh, Conscious Confidence, Use the Wisdom of Sanskrit to Find Clarity and Success. And that's available um, where all books are sold. Uh, and Amazon, Barnes & Noble. But my website will lead you to all the right places. And that's available in paperback, in ebook, and in audiobook. I recorded the audiobook. Um, you can go and listen to more podcasts if you want to find out more, learn some more about Sanskrit. They're all there. That's on my website and on YouTube. I've got magazine articles. There's a blog. Uh, and also I'm on social media. So follow me on social media, Facebook and Instagram in particular. And it's Conscious Confidence Sarah Main. And now next show, on my next show, I'm going to be talking about timeless wisdom, modern living, which is sort of harks back to some of the questions, but I'm actually going to be focusing in on this timeless wisdom, modern living. What is it and why should we give it the time of day, this whole thing about timeless wisdom? Um, so remember, Sanskrit's got your back and I'm going to sing you some Sanskrit to finish. And this is a beautiful prayer. I taught this to many children over the years and they loved it. So it's from the Brihadaranyaka Upanishad. Lead me from the unreal to the real. Lead me from darkness to light. Lead me from death to immortality. May peace and peace and peace be everywhere. Om Asatoma Sadgamaya Tamasoma Jyotirgamaya Mrityorma Amritam Gamaya Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Thanks a lot and we'll see you again. Thank you for listening to Conscious Confidence with Sarah Main. Join us next month on Transformation Talk Radio for more timeless wisdom with Sarah's exciting and innovative approach to living. Discover more joy, freedom, and step into your limitless potential. For more information on Sarah Main and her work, or to listen to past shows, visit sarahmain.com. 
Views expressed on this program are those of the host, guests, and callers, and do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its management, or advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio.